Hey guys, what's up? It's River, and today we're doing a user guide on the Nikon D3500. The goal of this video is to get you as comfortable and familiar as possible with your new Nikon camera and show you the exact techniques to get the best possible image out of your camera so that you can start shooting like a pro in no time. So, without further ado, let's get into it. And also, just to let you guys know, there's a link in the description below for the best possible pricing on this camera, so if you're interested, be sure to check that out. So first things first, let's go for the bare essentials. Now this is a camera that's really made for new, newer people and I don't want to skip over anything that a newer person may not know because maybe it's their first camera. So let's look at where the battery and the SD compartment is. If you look right here at the bottom of the camera, there's actually a latch that opens up and inside of this little gray thing, that's the battery. So what to take the battery out, you have to hit this orange thing and just let the battery slide right out. Now this is a thousand milliamp battery. It's not bad by any means, but it's always good to have a second or third battery. Um, you'll get about 500 shots or maybe a couple hours of video on this thing. I actually found this battery to last really, really long, but I'm also a really efficient shooter. Um, it's always good to have a second battery, but this is the battery. If you want to place it back in, you want to make sure it lines up with this uh, with the contact point. So you want the little teeth on the battery, which right there, you want that facing down to work. So this is the camera, you want that facing down and you just slide it right there. And the camera should boot up. Mine booted up. Next, I wanna show you guys where all the buttons and dials are. So right here at the top of the camera is your shutter button. And right next to it is this little flippy knob. And it's really straightforward. Um, I would imagine most people can figure this out. It says on and off right there. So flip it towards on and your camera will boot up. And if you flip it the other way, your camera will turn off. If you can't figure that out, we need to have a discussion. <laughs> um, and right next to that knob is your shutter button. Now this can get kind of tricky for new users. So if you push that thing all the way down, um, first, let me make sure I have my lens unlocked. I'll show, explain the lens unlock to you guys later. It will take a photo. But if I push it halfway down, you'll notice it goes boop boop. What that does is it actually, if you push it just halfway down, you'll get, well, one, the flash will go off if you're in a dark area, but you'll kind of get this orange light. Let's see if I can get it there. Yep, right there. You see that little orange light? What that actually does is it's a little orange light that goes off that quickly illuminates the frame and it lets the camera see whatever it's pointed at and it lets it grab autofocus. So when you push it halfway down, it kind of just lets the camera set up for the photo. If it's not dark, that light probably will not go off. Like right now, it's pointed at a bright thing and yep, no, it'll kind of go off. But just that halfway, will kind of let the camera get set up. Most people say this is the autofocus button, but I don't really agree with that. This is more of like the, intelligent detect camera setup button. So just halfway your camera, if it's in auto, cause I usually set this camera in auto. This is such a good camera in auto. Uh, it kind of just lets it intelligently detect what's in front of it and set up the shot. So I really call that the shot setup button. And if you press it all the way down, you'll take a photo. And right next to that button is this orange, uh, red little blip. I wish this button was bigger, but let me just make sure I can appropriately see it. It's this little red, it almost looks like a pimple to be honest, but that right there is the record button. Now that record button does not take photos. It actually starts to record video. So as you can see, if I push it right here, right now it's like focused on me. If I push that button, it will actually start to record a video file. This camera does do video and it does pretty decent Nothing to write home about, but it is very serviceable video. Uh, but that right there, if you hit the little pimple, as weird as that sounds, it will start uh, it will start video recording. And that's kind of the first thing you need to know to get this camera up and running. Next, I want to show you guys where exactly the dials are. Now, there's two kinds of people that are going to be using this camera. One, it's someone that's like brand new, like just a total noob. And I don't mean noob in a bad way, just like a total beginner. And they're like, I don't know what shutter and aperture mean. And that's totally fine. I remember when I picked up my first camera and I had no idea what those words meant. I remember I shot on auto for at least a good year and a half because I was lazy and I did not want to learn. Don't tell anyone. But uh, yeah, so there's two kinds of people, people who will want to use this camera in full auto and then there's people that know what aperture is and will want to use this camera in manual but don't necessarily know 
where all the dials and stuff are. So first, I'm gonna talk to the people that don't wanna use this camera in any manual setting and just are like, you just make it work. This next section is for you. So right up here, you can see there's a dial that has all the different modes for this camera. Now, just to quickly run you guys through the modes, the M means manual, the A means aperture priority, the S means shutter priority, and the P means program auto, but those are more advanced modes that we won't really cover today. The guide mode is pretty much a kid's mode for learning this camera, but uh, you know, if you guys were just using the guide, you wouldn't really need my video. But I do really recommend using that. It will help you learn this camera much faster. And the green camera symbol right there is, pro is just full auto. And this camera is fantastic in auto. When I say fantastic in auto, I mean 10 out of 10 good in auto. Like there is virtually no downside to using this camera in auto. And the little buttons right here, which is like these little um, icons, I guess. Uh, basically, that little face right there is portrait. That running person there is sports mode. The flower is landscape. Uh, this person with a star behind them is pretty much nighttime. This, mo this one right up here, the thunderbolt that's X'd out is no flash. And there's also an effects mode here, but the effects mode is really bad. I really don't recommend f fiddling around with it. Um, they're just not very good effects, to be honest. And right next to that dial is actually a lever. If you pull it once, it'll go to live view where you see what the camera sees on this screen. And if you pull it a second time, it'll actually turn on this eye hole right here. And so you can put your eye through it and look at whatever the camera's getting. This is pretty nifty. One thing that I like about this is when you pull it, it'll go to the menu, show you your settings. And it's nice to just be able to look down and be like, oh, that's what my camera set at. I appreciate that. It helps me work a little bit faster. So next, let's take an in-depth look at exactly what all the buttons on the back here do. If you hit the P, if you hit this little button right here, you'll see messy photos that I've taken of my place. And what that does is it allows you to just kind of scroll through the videos using this little button right here. You can go in many directions. You can go up, down, but that's more so for menus. But for the most part, if you just go left and right, you can go through stuff. And if you hit, turn this dial up here, you can go through photos just a teeny weeny bit faster, but that's, you know, that's more of an advanced function. Next, this is the menu button. This is where you can use the up and down feature on this button. And we'll take a look at the, this menu more in depth later in the video, but just wanna let you guys know that that is the menu button and that's what it does. If you hit the I button, it'll give you info on exactly where your major settings are. This is really quick to change major settings on your camera, like let's just say, I'm shooting and I'm like, uh, instead of going into the menu to change all these settings, just hit I. Right there, you can change raw, fine, whatever you want. You can change your um, ISO, ISO sensitivity and all that. And I find this is just like all your most important settings right there at a glance. It's really helpful, I really like it. If you hit this button right here that looks like a stack of paper, it lets you choose how fast you want your camera shooting. Uh, it does have a quiet shutter release mode. I don't think most people are gonna need it. Uh, that's more of an advanced function, but the main thing to note here is single frame or continuous. This camera does five frames per second, which is uh, not the fastest, but it also has a 13 second buffer. So for most people, I think that are just starting out and using this camera are gonna be shooting in single frame, but continuous is fun to do. And also there's a self timer. So if you wanna set this up for something, it's available if you just kind of press into it and then after that, for 10 seconds, it'll take a shot for you. But uh, one thing that I do kind of wish this camera could do was do a self timer at a different increment because maybe I need it at 20 seconds or 30 seconds or maybe even five minutes. Um, but unfortunately that functionality isn't there. That's really also more of an advanced camera functionality. And next, while still with live view on, if you hit info, it'll basically toggle different overlays and you know, sometimes you don't want anything, you just want a grid there. Sometimes you want to see all your settings right up there at the top. Sometimes you're more so concerned about like what your video's at. I kind of just think of it as um, hit it until you get like the overlay and the information that's important to you. But to be honest, I usually just leave it on this setting where I can just kind of see this. And when I go into video, it'll automatically show me what my timing for video is at. So I'm never too concerned. I usually just leave it at this and I kind of recommend you do the same. And next, these two buttons right here are actually zoom in and zoom out. Um, I've never really used these buttons that much. 
The autofocus in this camera is really good and it pretty much always gets lock. So I've never really seen an opportunity to go in and really like look if something is sharp. I guess if you're using old manual lenses, but um, to be honest, on a camera like this, I really can't imagine someone needing this or putting old manual lenses on it. So this is uh, kind of just useless for the time being. I guess if you're in your photos, you could kind of whip around and zoom in here, but again, unnecessary. And lastly, this button right here just flips your flash up. Again, in case we miss that, just flips your flash up. It's fun, um, but other than that, it doesn't really do anything. And a quick side note. Now, a lot of people will want to use this camera through the viewfinder, which is this hole right here. And now if you wear glasses, you may have trouble seeing through this thing because this thing may not be adjusted to your eye, but there's a dial right here that actually adjusts the viewfinder to your eye. So if you wear glasses like me, you may use this, but to be honest, because I wear glasses, I rarely look through viewfinders. I'm more of like a live view LCD screen kind of guy. And next, I want to quickly explain to you guys what this black dial right here is. It kind of is a weird dial, just looks like a black circle, but it is very turnable. So now what this dial does is, if you look right here, this right here is your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. And I have my ISO set pretty high, but I'll explain more on that later. So if you, for example, want to change your shutter speed, um, you turn this dial and it will actually make your shutter speed faster or slower depending on which direction you turn it in. But what if you want to change your aperture? If you look right here, there's a little button right here that actually has the aperture symbol next to it, but it has a plus and minus on it. Now, if you hit that, this live view, let's get this back here. If you actually hold this live view, this plus and minus button down and then change it, you can change your aperture. Pretty nifty, right? So it is. it does take a bit of me like muscle memory, but without the button, change your shutter, hold this down, and change your aperture. This is the way I like to do it. Canon actually does it simil very similarly, um, but this I find is the best and quickest way to do it. Now let's look at ISO. There's a couple ways to manage your ISO. If you hit I, you can quickly go to ISO and, you know, let's just set that to the 200. Kind of a really low ISO and now as you can see my image is way darker. But if I take an image, yep, I get a darker image. So the reason I actually have it set to 3200 is 3200 I would say is like the max for this camera. It does go all the way up to 25,600, but honestly, it's not that great. Unless you need it, do not go that high up in your ISO. 6400, maybe with like a bit of denoising, but 3200 is really your limit. I like to keep this camera at 800, but I, again, like to keep most cameras at 800. Um, but, so let's just take this back to 3200 because we need the light here. Um, and the other way to change your ISO is if you hit menu, and we'll go more, go more, uh, we'll go into the menus a little bit more later, but sorry for the flub there, but you can also set your ISO sensitivity here in the menu. Um, again, we have it set to 3200 ISO. Uh, you can also go to auto ISO sensitivity control where it'll just control ISO by itself. Do not keep this on. Again, I repeat, do not keep this on because it will just max out your ISO all the time, even if it doesn't need to, and you will get really grainy images. So manage your ISO yourself. I like 3200 uh, for where we're shooting right now, but again, 800 is probably your sweet spot uh, for most cameras, to be honest. And a quick thing I just wanna mention is that on the lens right here is a little button. If you hit that, you can actually, you have to unlock the lens. Now, most lenses don't need to be unlocked, but this camera right here, when it's on the L, it's locked, and you have to hold that button down to unlock the lens, and then it'll stay between 18 to 55. Um, they just do it because of the design of this lens. Like, when it's locked, it stays pretty small. When it's unlocked, it's pretty big, and you don't necessarily want your camera to be this big all the time, especially when you're trying to fit it into a bag. So. You've got the lock mode on here and the camera, if you try to f operate it in lock mode, will say for taking photos, rotate the zoom ring to extend the lens. Basically, it will not work. Um, it's not ideal because sometimes you're like, okay, got to turn the camera on and unlock the lens, but it is what it is with this lens. So now that we have all of that out of the way, let's look at guide mode. So once you have your camera set to guide right here, 
and you hit menu, again, you have to hit menu, and this menu will come up. And this is the guide mode menu, and this is what I like to call kids mode. So if you just hit this middle OK button on easy, on um, shoot, you will go to easy or advanced. Easy is hella easy. It will literally ask you what you're trying to shoot, and you just pick that. Like let's say we're trying to shoot with no flash or distant objects, close-ups, um, moving subjects. And it will say the camera is now in sports mode and release the mode to set to continuous and literally there you go now you're in sports mode um super super useful thing to have in this camera and this is the advent now let's look at advanced operation it will ask you more difficult questions like do you want to freeze motion vehicles show water uh sorry show water flowing capture sunsets da 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 and let's just say in this case we want to, this is because this is probably the most popular thing that like people like to do, is let's say you want to soften the background. So it'll kind of give you a little explanation on what it's going to do. And then it'll literally tell you, okay, how wide of an aperture do you want? The widest this lens will go to is 3.5. But again, you can get apertures, you can get lenses with much, much wider apertures. But at 3.5, you get it kind of like, enough so but either way and if you want to go back at any point and it'll actually tell you that you should probably zoom in so you know on this lens we're going to zoom into a 55 i don't really have anything to show you guys but point being yep your settings will be locked in there as you can see well actually no on a 55 this lens will go to 5.6 so for at 18 right there it's wide open at 3.5 and you'll get blurry backgrounds if you do portraits but either way you'll get pretty good with your camera pretty fast using guide mode and it even has something for like setting up your camera like image quality and all that and i'll kind of explain it to you and if you go back to menu here it even has things for retouching now retouching is pretty advanced but it's mainly about cropping and adjusting things on your photo that's really should be for another video because um, that's in getting into post-production but that is how you use guide mode now we've gone over how to use this camera in auto mode how to use it in guide mode and how to change your own aperture and shutter speed including iso the thing that most people forget to do is set the camera up correctly in menu because the camera menu or the settings you have in your menu are the things that are in processing your image if those things aren't set up correctly you won't get an optimal image out of your camera so Let's look into this camera and see exactly how to set up the menu to get the best possible image out of it. So now we're gonna take a look at this camera and figure out how to set this up appropriately in the menu so that you get the best possible image out of this. So first of all, we have image quality. Most people like to shoot raw, cause you know, it's raw. It's just like the best profile ever, sorry, the best image quality ever. And to be honest, I think you're kind of wasting your time if you're shooting raw all the time. If you're shooting something just at like your kid's birthday party, because a lot of the people using this camera are hobbyists, shooting something at your kid's birthday party, vacation, just something casual, JPEG is totally fine. Like literally, JPEG is fine. <laughs> but honestly, normal should be okay, and JPEG basic is doable. But again, if you're not looking to do some heavy editing on your photos, I genuinely do not think you need to waste your time or hard drive space with raw because again raw does take up quite a bit more space if you're doing a project like a real artsy like artistic commercial paid whatever have you project yeah then definitely shoot raw plus jpeg and you know get the most that you can because again this is a paid project and if you're just shooting raw um i don't think it's the worst idea ever but i would just shoot jpeg just to be safe because sometimes raw is really really slow to work with and sometimes you just want to go through the jpegs and see what you have but shooting both RAW and JPEG will take up a lot more room. My rule of thumb is, unless I'm shooting a paid project where I'm just trying to do the best job ever for my client, I'm either gonna shoot RAW or JPEG, not both. Because if I'm gonna, because generally I know if I'm gonna be editing a photo later on or doing like retouching and stuff, so I'll just shoot RAW. Like I'm not gonna do anything with the JPEG. If I'm just like out and about shooting with friends and I'm at like a special event, out with loved ones like i'm not gonna edit those photos those photos are just gonna go on my facebook so i'll just stick with jpeg um so depending on what your need is i usually just stick with jpeg for most of my stuff i actually know some professional photographers that shoot most of their stuff in jpeg and now 
if you shoot JPEG, you'll have image size. Now, this is the how big your image is. You can shoot like 6,000 by 4,000, which is bigger than 4K, or you can shoot medium, which is 4K, small, which is 2K. I will just stick to uh, I will just stick to uh, a large because that is the full megapixel size. I paid for the megapixel, so I'm just gonna stick with it. Um, ISO settings. We looked at this earlier, but generally this is a this is not the most efficient way to change it. But uh, we're sticking with 3200 for a second. But the thing that you want to make sure you keep off, and in case you skip the last part, please, 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 do not leave I auto ISO sensitivity control on. Make sure this is off. You click this OK button, push down to off, and make sure this is off. Because th th what this will ha do is it will push your ISO as high as it can automatically because the camera is just trying to get the most light into your image and it doesn't care about how good your image looks. So it's just going to give you all these grainy images and honestly, it'll just destroy your photo quality. So leave that off. Next, white balance, leave this to auto. These cameras are basically every camera out there now is really good at detecting white balance and you, it's always changeable in post-production. So white balance, just leave it at auto. I haven't changed white balance manually in years. Um, next, set picture control. This has a bunch of different profiles for what will look best. Personally, I usually just leave it at standard. You get really good colors unless you want to shoot black and white. But again, it kind of depends on what you're doing. I never leave this camera in flat. I feel like the flat stuff just looks a little too flat. Um, though flat video might be, it flat might look good for video if I want to do color grading on it, but really standard looks good. Vivid I find is a little too poppy, but you do have a bunch of these profiles available to you right here. Feel free to play around with them because you might have different tastes than me, but I like standard. Color space RGB. This is more so for editing and post-production. sRGB is standard, but you can change it to Adobe RGB if you plan on doing some heavy raw stuff or so, some heavy post-production, but generally sRGB is totally fine. It's something that's in most cameras, but no one ever really changes it. Active D-lighting. I actually like to leave this on if I don't plan on doing too much post-production. What that's really doing is that it's optimizing the way shadow and lighting looks in your camera. I like to leave it on because if I'm shooting JPEG, I just like to let things look good. And this camera does a pretty good job with it. But if you're like a hardcore like photographer that's like, no, I have to get every last detail correct. And it really has to all be my vision. Yeah, take it off. It's not even a big deal. But that's a setting I usually do like to leave on. And most professional photographers I know leave it on. They're like, yeah, it looks good. I like it. Noise reduction. So this is a tricky one. This is something if you're a newbie, if you're just like someone that's starting out, leave it on. Don't worry about it. It looks totally usable, but a lot of people, they're like, they prefer to noise reduce on their own in post-production and they don't want any in-camera noise reduction. Sorry about the shake there. So it's a little hard to hold this camera at this distance, but um, yeah, it really depends on you. If you're just shooting for yourself and you're not gonna be doing any post-processing on it, leave it on, it makes it look better. Vignette control. Now, vignette control, I always leave on high because this lens specifically, has a lot of vignette on it, and I hate the look of vignette. I leave on high. It's basically this little black circle around your image. It makes it look cheap and un amateur. Leave it on high. Trust me on this one. Auto distortion control. Leave on, leave this on off because this lens specifically on this camera does not distort a lot. This is more so if you have older lenses or different lenses with a lot of distortion, you will be totally fine. And now the last setting that I want to go over with you guys is the focus mode. Focus mode is key. So there's two focus modes that you can set up here, viewfinder and live view. Now what you wanna do is basically viewfinder, set it to continuous servo because most likely you're gonna be shooting uh, through the viewfinder for photos. Uh, single servo, what that does, it just takes one focus aim and it's like, okay, that's your focus aim, that's what we're holding. Continuous servo will let you kind of keep tracking, keep going. And when generally I find when I'm shooting through the viewfinder, I'm really focused and I'm kind of really like getting into the camera and really looking at my subject move. So find continuous servo is really good for that. And generally shooting in continuous servo through the viewfinder, I'm getting really good autofocus and it's something that I'm focusing on um, mentally, not lens wise, but 
it, I generally find this is a good setting. Now, the focus mode in live view isn't quite as good and full-time servo is not a good idea. This, is, this means like it's just always tracking and it's not good enough in live view to always be tracking. So I always wanna leave this on single servo, which basically means when I'm in live view, I just get one focus point and that's it. I go somewhere else and it focuses there. So yeah, focus mode and having it set up properly is key on this camera. This camera is a fantastic, and I mean fantastic, uh, autofocus system. You just have to make sure you have it set up properly. And now right below focus mode is AF area mode. What this basically means, it tells the autofocus what area to be looking in. Now, there's two parts of this. So let's go into a viewfinder first. When you're looking through the viewfinder, if you set it to single point AF, what that will basically do is just pick the little, you'll see there's a little red square here. It'll just kind of focus to that wherever it figures. Well, that's a white wall, so it's not gonna pick up any focus, but right down there, it'll be like, okay, that's where I'm focusing. This is really good for shooting models, shooting specific subjects, and just really kind of controlling your image. But if you're someone that's just in this camera as a hobbyist, and you don't really care about any of that and you just want the camera to do it all and you're just trying to have a good time using it, auto area autofocus is fantastic. This camera is really, really good in auto as I've said many times and this mode is great. I use it often myself and it just kind of figures it all out for you. It's just like, okay, cool. Yep, no, that was a bad, that was a bad one. But just generally in street, whenever I'm out on the street shooting or like I'm just, shooting around my neighborhood. It does a very good job. Just figures out what needs to be in autofocus. Now, the next part is my favorite thing in this camera, and it's really useful for a beginner camera. The face priority autofocus. It pretty much figures out where the faces are, and right there, it's focusing on Harrison Ford's face. And as you can see, as I move the camera around, it's just sticking to Harrison Ford's face, and it'll just make sure to get that fo face in focus. And now, you know, it's a pretty common feature in cell phones and stuff, but I love having this in a little camera like this. And yeah, it'll just keep the fo face in focus. But maybe you're not trying to get faces in focus. And for something like that, I'd just go with a wide or even normal, but it'll just kind of give you a really wide berth on uh, how big that box is right there that can be in, that can, uh, be in focus. So, you know, maybe you want it to be as big as possible. Maybe you want it to be a bit smaller. So like right here, we'll go to normal and it'll be a bit smaller, but you know, just depending on how big you want that focus box to be, you can, you can choose. But personally, I really, really enjoy keeping this on face priority and it just makes getting focus that much quicker and easier. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope it brought you a lot of value and you learned a few new things about your Nikon camera. If you haven't picked up this camera yet, there's a link in the description down below for the best pricing on this camera and I highly recommend checking it out. If you have any questions whatsoever about this camera, filming and photography in general, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. As always, be sure to like and subscribe for new content. Until next time, guys.